final, but recording in progress. And then what I'm going to do is make you the host. Can I do that? Let's see. Make host. And then she said, have to accept it. Oh. You got it, Tom? She says, just says I'm host. I don't know if I, just, yeah, you're host now. So now you're host. So now we're going to drink some water real quick here. Sure thing. All right, five seconds. We'll get recording here. Five. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brenton McGee, and I am the Performing Arts Associate here at Friends Home in Tennant Square, Pennsylvania. And it is our privilege and honor to present these Meet the Musician lectures, not only for our residents to hear from professional musicians of all kinds, composers, music teachers, et cetera, uh, but to share to our community and around the world what Friends Home Kennedy has to offer uh, with these music lectures to support um, professionals in the music field. And uh, today we have the distinct honor and pleasure to have a friend of mine, Tom Sitzler, he is a baritone opera singer and a music teacher. And I'm gonna read his bio and the floor will be his. Tom Sitzler, baritone, has been captivating audiences, his audiences with his warm voice and convincing stage presence. Performing across the country, he has become a crowd favorite with companies in Ohio, Oklahoma, and Colorado to name a few. In 2009, Mr. Sitzler stepped into the professional arena as the old gypsy in Intravitore in Union Avenue Opera. Among other programs and performances, Tom participated in the Victoria J. Masterbuno Emerging Artist Program in New Jersey, covering Figaro in Barber of Seville. In 2012, Mr. Sitzler was hearing singing from Silvano from Il Balno uh, and in Masseria with UAO, where Sarah Brian Miller from the St. Louis Post uh, Dispatch said this, Tom Sitzler made the most of a small role. Uh, and then there's a bunch of other things here. He's a frequent performer in Colorado. Tom has been seen in performances with Boulder Opera in Colorado, Opera Steamboat, Central States Opera Ensemble Artist, and Horence Tabor, as well as baritone solos with several local orchestras, including Colorado Chamber Orchestra, Boulder Symphony, Lamir Chorale and Orchestra, Aurora Symphony, and his most recent performances included the role of Sonamai from Le Prave Matelon with, I think I said that right, with Hub City Opera, as well as the world premiere and workshop of Karl Rahm of Libavar with Bohem Opera, New Jersey. Tom, I met last year. Uh, I played uh, a certain role of Waldstein uh, in this opera that my friend Michael Dutka uh, presented, and our friend personally, uh, invited us. We auditioned for his opera, and uh, we both were in there, and we were both lead roles, and that's where we met with Bohem Opera in New Jersey. And uh, we had Michael Dutka here in November, where he presented his opera, and I thought I would give Tom a nice call, because uh, Tom is a really good guy. He's a wonderful baritone singer, kind personality, but he also has a music business where he is presenting how to read music, how to learn music for any kind of level. So I hope you enjoy this. And without further ado, my friend and baritone, Tom Stitzler, the floor is yours. Give him a hand. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Brent, for that warm welcome. Uh, that was fantastic. Um, I look forward to um, hearing more about all this. So let's uh, let's kind of give a bit more about me. Uh, so I run a music studio where I teach online lessons as well as to any age from kids all the way to adults. And um, Brent, would it be possible to turn the camera so I can see everybody? I don't know if you heard me. <laughs> um, anyway, so... Yes, we will. I'm going to turn it right now. So let me get that okay, done. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. Great to see some bright, shining faces over there. Once I get all set up. All right. <clears throat> okay, I think we're set up here. Okay, cool. So 
Um, one of the subjects in music that has become sort of a big passion of mine is music theory, and particularly music theory for singers. Um, oftentimes when a student learns music theory on piano, it makes a lot of sense. Once we get to singing, though, it's very abstract and weird. So today, what I am going to present to you is um, two ways on how to find your notes on the staff. So naming the letter names, spaces, and line notes. Um, and then as well as then taking those and figuring out what is called intervals. And those intervals are names uh, like the distance from one letter name to the next. Um, it's very basic to think about, uh, but can also get a little complicated. But hopefully, uh, we will see when I do this demonstration, a couple pointers and ways to uh, quickly figure this out. So I'm gonna go ahead and screen share here. All right. Um, go ahead and let me know, Brent, if you see my screen, what I'm showing. Uh, I'm gonna move it to this side so they can see it better. Good, that's good. Awesome, all right. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get into uh, Full screen here. I'm going to present. Boom. Um, some of you in the um, out there in the audience may already know what these notes are on the music staff, and some of you may not. Some of you may be a little rusty on it, but let's just go ahead and take it from the very beginning. This is sort of an example of something I would teach to uh, a group who is completely new to reading music. So when we do line, uh, let's just talk about this. So when we have notes on this music staff, we have what's called line notes, which are where the note head is on the line. And here's an example of some note heads. We have uh, we call a whole note here. We have a couple eighth notes. Notice that the note head is going through the line here. So we got this line going through it. And then we also have what's called space notes. Now, space notes are the note head is in between two lines. Now this would look a little like this. Notice that there's no line going through the note heads. Now in music, they've created these uh, five lines and four spaces to kind of help us figure out um, how to read this music. So let's go ahead and look here at uh, line notes. Uh, for some reason, my little treble clef isn't working. So these are line notes in the treble clef. <clears throat> The bottom line, if you want to go ahead and look at your uh, first page of your worksheet, you will notice that I have given you the letters for each of these five lines. E, G, B, D, and F. Now, what I like to do is kind of come up with a sentence. And some of you may remember back in uh, when you were younger in grade school that you may remember something like every good boy does fine, or every good boy deserves fudge, something like that. Um, what I'm going to have you do, though, is come up with your own sentence. Um, it could be something ridiculous that that will help you remember what it is. Um, anything generic like this kind of doesn't really stand well into my head. So here's an example of what I came up with. Elves grab big dog fur. Now, why does this work? You can kind of see in your mind, if you close your eyes and think of an elf or a bunch of elves grabbing a big dog that's covered in fur. And then um, in that order, every good boy, elves bring, elves grab big dog fur. It'll kind of sit in your head a little bit more and you can kind of remember it sooner. Then on the trouble staff, we have our space notes. We have four spaces. Thus, we're going to have four letters. This one is quite simple to remember, F-A-C-E. Uh, you also may remember that this turns itself into the word face. Um, you are more than welcome to also come up with something else. Uh, frogs all collect equestrians or something, something a little funky like that. Um, so feel free to go ahead and fill in the blanks on your own. Now, after this, we're gonna go over to the other clef that we read from, which is the bass clef. Now, the, the two main clefs that we read music on are treble and bass, particularly as singers. Um, there are other clefs, uh, but you're not really going to see those. So there's no need to learn those. So the line notes on the bass clef are as such. 
G, B, D, F, and A. You may remember good boys do fine always. Now, I'm not a big fan of that one, especially if I decided to say every good boy deserves fun because it's too similar to each other and I might get confused. And actually, I've had a, a bunch of students who use that and they do get confused. They go, wait, isn't that the bass clef one? Wait, isn't that the treble clef one? So what I do, and this was from my time living in Denver and teaching, I had a student who came up with this really cool one and it was for the Broncos. And the, what she said was, go Broncos, don't fumble again. So I kind of adapted that for here um, outside of Philly. We're going to call it Go Birds, Don't Fumble Again. You can go ahead and feel free to go and fill that in into your little, uh, on your worksheet. Go Birds, Don't Fumble Again. Um, and that, you know, that'll sit a little better in your head. It does definitely doesn't mind. Now, after we get the line notes, we're going to move ourselves over to the space notes. Again, we have the same five lines and four spaces. So our four spaces are as such, A, C, E, G. Now, um, there's a typical one that a lot of us do, which is all cows eat grass. Another one we have is all cars eat gas. Um, and you know, feel free to be very creative of what you write, as long as it is a descriptive sentence in your head. So the one I like to go for that sticks with me is all cars eat gas. And eventually this one's not going to uh, uh, be correct anymore because we're all the electric vehicles that are coming about, they'll have to figure out a new one for this. Anyway, so now that we know those, let us go ahead and kind of look at the uh, examples you have in your book or in the worksheet. Um, and you can go ahead and fill in the blanks using the worksheet you already have and write the letter next to the note that is on that staff. Um, I unfortunately don't have that here on me. Um, I could actually, well, no. Yeah, let me just go ahead and quickly find that. Oh, that's the wrong one. Okay. Well, unfortunately, I can't find it. Anyway, so I, in the back of your, uh, you'll notice that there's a couple examples for you to fill out. So you can do those now, or you can do those later. Um, it's after we already wrote in all the letter names uh, of the spaces and stuff. Um, this is on there. If it's on the first line of the treble clef, go ahead and write an E based off of what you got there. If it's on the top line, it's an F. Just kind of figure out from the examples that we've given you. And we can fill in those little um, extra, extra examples. All right. Okay. Let me go ahead and get back to my. Oh, what happened to my video? Having a slight technical difficulty. Oh, there it is. Oh. You got it. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. <laughs> um, are you seeing space notes that we see? We're seeing you right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let me get back to. Oh, okay. Back to Sorry about that. Sorry about that. No worries. We're good now. Perfect. All right, back to presenting. All cards you guess. All right. Now, once we know the letter names, we um, can then identify what we call intervals. Now, an interval, by definition, is basically the uh, distance from one note to the next. Uh, you can be anything from an A to a C or uh, one key to the next key. Any interval is the distance from that note to the next. The first step in identifying an interval is to identify the letter names of each of the two notes. Usually an interval is only between two notes. Then once we've identified the letter names, let's say A and C, we then count the number of steps from one letter to the next. For example, C to D is only two letters. One, C is one, D would be two, thus it is a second. If I have C to E, we follow the alphabet, C 
E plus E D E is a third, and so forth. Now, once we've uh, established what it is, we identify the quality of the interval. We have uh, a several qualities we can choose from. In order to figure out the quality of the interval, we count the number of half steps. And I'm about to explain what a half step is here in a bit. Once you know the number of half steps and whole steps, we then can distinguish if the interval is a major interval, a minor interval, a perfect interval, a diminished interval, or an augmented interval. Now these two, the diminished and augmented intervals are ones that you will probably likely not see that often. So we're not gonna talk about those today. What we are gonna talk about are major, minor, and perfect intervals. Um, if you wanna take a little notes on here, the perfect intervals are only going to be fourths, fifths, and octaves. Our major and minor intervals will be thirds, seconds, sixths, and sevenths. Now, what is a half step? Very easily, it is the distance from one key to the next on the piano, whether it is a black or white key. Now we use the piano because it's a very good picture. And here is a picture of half steps on the piano. So here we have our piano. Notice that I have a white key followed by a black key and then a white key, black key and so forth. And then we have this little gap here, two white keys. Here are examples where the red dots of what we call half steps. Boom, 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 boom. Now, from here, from using a half step, we can now develop what is called a whole step. Simply, a whole step is two half steps make a whole step. And here are some examples of whole steps on the piano. Notice that I'm going one half step up and then another half step down, and that makes that a whole step. Here, um, this white key to this white key is a half step, and then I go up to the next black key, which makes it a whole step. Now, why do we need to know these whole steps and half steps? It's going to help us figure out these intervals. Okay, we're going to come back to our treble clef, and for now, we're just going to go ahead and use the treble clef. Here are two notes that we apply onto our treble clef. Um, we have F and A. So looking at your uh, sheet for the treble clef note, letter names of space notes, go ahead and, and, and think about what would be the name of these two letters. I already kind of said it, but if you look at your sheet, you can distinguish that they are F and A. Now, let's find the distance from F to A. If you remember that the musical alphabet goes from the letters A through G, and then it restarts itself after G. Now, if I were to put a letter in between, it would be a G. So here we're gonna go ahead and put that in. So here, the next line is called G. And if I put the numbers up, I have one, two, three letters. Thus, I am a third. The first space here we say is one, the next line is two, and then three up here on this space note. Thus, we are a third. Now the question is, what type of third would this be? What is the quality? So our quality for thirds are either gonna be a major or a minor third. So in order to do this, let's figure out what the half steps are between each of these notes. So from F to A, we're gonna have a good number of half steps. And here they are um, written in. We use this little symbol, it's called a sharp sign or a pound sign or the number sign to tell us that we're gonna go up a half step from F. So F to F sharp, and then another half step from F sharp to G, and another half step to G sharp, and then a half step up to A. All of that looks like this. We're gonna name each of these notes from F to A, F, F sharp, G, G sharp. And then we're gonna count the number of half steps from each of these intervals. 
from F to F sharp is one half step. F sharp to G, two half steps. G to G sharp, three half steps. And G sharp to A, four half steps. So in total, we have four half steps. Um, and this is what we call a major third. I'm about to show you in the very back of your uh, worksheet, you, you will see sort of a, uh, a cheat sheet on counting all your intervals. If I add these half steps together, I end up getting one, two, and a half. So two whole steps and one half step gives us our major third. So if you look over here, here's our interval sheet sheet. We have a minor second, which is only one half step. We have a major second, which equals one whole step. Here we have our minor third, which is a whole step plus a half step. Here we have a major third, which is a whole step plus a whole step. Here we have a perfect fourth, which is a whole step plus a whole step plus a half step. Notice I'm gonna go ahead and abbreviate this to W meaning whole step and H meaning half step. Uh, we have this interesting interval called the devil's chord or devil's interval um, called the tritone. It's not a very pretty in, um, sound, uh, but this one is the interval between a perfect fourth and a perfect fifth. Um, it is a whole step, whole step plus a whole step. So three whole steps length. Our perfect fifth is a whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Our minor six is just a whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step. Notice we just keep adding one more half step to each of these. A major sixth is just like a minor six, so four whole steps plus a half step. Our minor seventh is five whole steps. Our major seven is the five whole steps plus one more half step. And then our perfect eighth or octave is six whole steps. Now there are many ways to get to intervals. Um, this is one little kind of cheat sheet to remember. Um, another is to kind of, uh, it's all about yeah, it's doing some math. So if I were to say, I memorized that a perfect fifth is uh, this series of whole steps and half steps, um, then I would say that a perfect fourth is just a whole step lower than a perfect fifth. A minor sixth would be a half step higher, and a major sixth would be a whole step higher than a perfect fifth. Now, if you remember what an octave is, octave being A to A, um, if I were to go down a half step, I have a major seventh, and if I were to go down a whole step, I have a minor seventh. To figure out our thirds from our seconds, if I remember that our whole step is a major second. If I add one half step, I get myself a minor third. If I add a whole step from the major second, I have a major third. Two holes add together. All right. That kind of went quite faster than I was expecting. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and uh, do some examples together. Um, let me pull up a whiteboard. And we can go ahead and, and I think actually, if you want to turn on the sound and I can get some people to. Uh, some people. Yeah, yeah, the sound is on right now, Tom. Say hi, hi everyone. Hi. Okay, hi. the sound you can hear them, right? Yes, I can hear them. Right. Yes, it's on. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's go ahead and build our. Let's go ahead and build our. So if you remember, we have so five. Remember, nine. we have five. Nine. I want to stand there. Okay. Four lines and five lines. Five. I'm gonna try to draw a trouble clap. Yeah, not bad, right? <laughs> 
All righty. So I'm going to go ahead. Right. Right. So I'm going to go ahead. And I want somebody. I want somebody. Uh, maybe, uh, uh, Brett, maybe, help me. Uh, help me. Who's going to answer this question? question. What would be the name? So of, I want to talk. Name of you good? Yep. Yeah, yeah. If you just want to, I want to say. Yeah, 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 I want to play the name. Sure. Name. Uh, name this out. Uh, uh, So I drew a note. Can you see it here? And if anybody in, in the uh, if in the, 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 the note, the the if you feel like you feel figure out what the name of the oh, don't be shy, anybody. Yeah. Yeah. So what we have, if you look at well, your have, left you long space long. notes, you will see that this is a space note and it is the note F. We're gonna add another one. Let's go and put this one. Now, looking at your um, examples for the space notes, Let's look at which space it's in. So we're in space one, two, three. And if you notice which letter is in space three, that is the letter C. All right. One of them got it right. One of them was saying C right off the bat. <laughs> yeah. 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 So now let's go ahead. So now, let's go ahead and figure out So what is the distance from these two notes? One way we can do it is count the line and spaces in between. So the first letter or first note is one. Note is one. The next line is two. The next, line is two. The next space is the three. Next space is three. The next line is four. The next line is four. Then we end on five. Then we end on five. So here we have so a. Here we have a. Now the question is. Is a perfect fit, perfect fit, or some other kind of interval? Kind of if we look at, we look at letter, we to the next. We have F, F, F. F. After that, we have F sharp. That, we have F sharp. Then we have G. Then we have G. And then G sharp. And then G sharp. From G sharp, we go to A. G sharp, we go to A. And then A sharp. And then A sharp. From A sharp, we have B. From A sharp, we have B. And then from B, we, and have, from B, we have C. C. Now, now, can somebody tell me why there's not a B sharp in between B and C? Any idea? Any idea? What do you guys think? D sharp to C, what interval is that? What interval? He's asking the interval. So one is saying three. Okay. Joan is saying three. So from, from so F, from, from D, F we actually have a, is a fifth. Is a fifth. Mm hmm and these are the number of letters, the number of letters from, from F to C. So F, to C. F, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B sharp, B. The number of half steps between. Number of half steps between. We have one, two, three, four, five, six half steps. If we combine these half steps to be whole steps, we have one whole step, we have two whole steps, and we have three whole steps. 
So which interval did we find on our little graph, our cheat sheet has Anybody know the answer? Anybody know the answer? Say that one more time, Tom. Sure. Yes. So if you look at your cheat sheet, the very last page of your um, of your little worksheet, you will see a section that tells you how many half steps and whole steps from one interval to the next. And if you look at the perfect fifth, you'll see that there are three whole steps that make up that interval. So here we have F, F sharp, half steps, F sharp to G. And we add those half steps together to make a whole step. And in total, we have three whole steps. So looking at the cheat sheet, find the interval that has three whole steps or three W's that add together. And that'll tell you which interval we are at from F to C. Does anybody see that? So the, see that? Yeah, so the, which one has the three whole steps, folks? The three whole steps on the cheat sheet is what he's asking. The devil's interval. Someone said the devil's interval. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The A to F, the G and B is what another one said. Yes. So we have one. Two, three. Oh, what did I do wrong here? <laughs> I think I did. Oh, no, I got them all there. So this would actually be a perfect fit from F to C. I may have uh, goofed on my, uh, my little uh, uh, cheat sheet there. Let's see here, one, two, three. That's right. So according to my cheat sheet, you are right. It is the tritome, but unfortunately I messed that up. So I will resend a new one of those uh, uh, with the appropriate uh, symbols there. Uh, my bad on that goofing. All right, let's go ahead and make a whole new one here. Do, 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 do. How do I erase the whole thing? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go ahead and just draw another staff here. Nice mistake. All right, we're going to remain again in our trouble clef. Now I'm going to go ahead and write one on this line here. And let's write another one on, uh, oops. I accidentally made too many lines. All right. Now, does anybody want to go ahead and tell me what would be the letter name for this line note right here? Tom, can you, there's the, on our screen, it's explore new tools. Can you get rid of that? Don't you, do you see it on the screen? Explore new tools. Oh. Uh, yeah, do you see that? Oh. See if it's yeah. still there. Yeah. I think now you see me instead. But no worries, I can tell them what the note is if it need be, so. All right, well, um, are you still seeing Explore New Tools? Yeah, it's a B and an E, right? Yes. All right, we can see that. A B and an E, everybody. There we go, B and E. So now let's go ahead and figure out what the interval is between these two. So from B to C, we have our half step. 
let's go ahead and name all the letters in between. So we have C, and then we're going to have C sharp. And then we're going to have D. Oh my gosh, this is terrible writing. And, and then D sharp. This is. Let me rewrite those. All right, so we have B. Why does it not want to draw? There. All right, we're going to go ahead and scrap this one. I have a different idea of what I would like to do. We're going to go to a website called musictheory.net. Uh, I love this website because it, it shows you a lot of, um, has little lessons in it. It also shows little exercises so you can do note identification, note construction. So we're going to go into this note identification. And we're going to take away, I'm going to make this a little bit smoother. I'm just going to stick with the notes that we know. Let's take away any actual titles. There we go. All righty. So let's go ahead and put uh, take you off mute, and let's have somebody tell me the letter name of this letter letter. name. Letter name of that note. Look on the screen. What's the letter name? Did you hear it? Um, I, I I heard something. Um, I, I heard something. Was that E? Was that E? E. That is correct. That is correct. All right, now let's do another one. Who here can tell me the letter name of this note? D. There we go. There we go. All right, somebody else want to tell me the letter? Uh, go ahead. What's the next letter, everybody? Look in the screen. What is that note? A is correct. All right, now we got another one. What would be the name of this note? What about this note, everybody? Look at the screen. We got a B. Someone right. said B. Here we go. Let's do a few more of these. We got one more here. What is what is this one? What is that note, everybody? F is what they're saying. Here we go. All right, now I'm going to switch us to the bass clef. Change our parameters here. All right, now go ahead and look at your examples for bass clef. What would be the letter name of this one? What is the letter name of this note, everybody? Yell it out. Yeah. F is what they're saying. What it is. All right, the next one here is a space note in the top space of our bass clef. What is this one? What's this note, everybody? Someone said an E. That would be correct if we were in. So look for this, the example with the symbol that looks like this curved line with the two dots. Which is so if you say that it's, in the, it's a different clef, Right, so it's not, it would not be an E natural. What note will it be? That's an e. Nope, it's not an E. That's treble clef. Bass clef, what would that be? G, you wanna yeah. go with that? G, yeah. all right, that G's it. That's it. All right, so sticking with the bass clef, what would be this interval? It's a minor third down from the, the notes. So what would that note be in the bass clef? It's a minor third down. You could also remember, it might help. You also remember, remember this, the, the sentence we had for spaces, all cars eat gas. It 
If G was the first note, folks, all cars eat gas, what's the one before gas? C. Nope. That, that's cars. So what, what's the letter? E. Yeah, that's right. E. Another space note. Here's the next space note. Which one is that one? The one lower. Uh, C. Yep, you're right. C. All right. All right, now we're back to one that we already did. What would be the name of this one? Which one is this note, folks? We just did it. E. 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 Yeah. Let's see one more. What is this one? What is this? So that's the A, as one person said. That's right. All right, we're going to go back here and we're going to do interval identification. And instead of doing qualities, let's leave this with the notes that we know. And let's take off key signatures. And no qualities. Okay. So here, let's identify the two notes, and then let's figure out, is it a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, or octave? And we're not going to worry about the quality of it. So who can name me the name? Who can name the notes? Say it, Joan. Yoda. Say that again. You said B and F? B and F. B and F is what That's she said. Right. So we have B and F. So if we count from B up to F, or we count the number of lines and spaces, the first line is one, second line is two, the next line is three, the next space is four, and then this line is five. So what would the interval be now that we know it's a five? Any idea, anybody? What interval between the two, between B and F? Five. They're saying five, but is it five. a major fifth or five. a minor fifth? Well, but we're not going to worry about quality. Well, we're not going to worry about quality. Oh, okay. not quality. Yeah. Sorry. That's right. So we, when we say five, we're going to go ahead and call it a fifth. So oops, how do I go back to this? There we go. Fifth. All right. Now let's name these two notes and figure out the interval. What are the notes, everybody? G. One said G and one said B. So G, I think, is correct. Yeah, so G for the first yeah, one. G for the first one. And then what's the what's next? What's the next note? What's the next? Someone said D. You're close. You're very close. And someone close. said close. D. C? Someone C, said D. C and one said D. D. Yeah. Yeah, C is the correct yeah, one. Yeah, C is the correct one. All right, so now let's go ahead and count the lines and spaces in between. So again, the first one is one, the next space is two, the next line is three, and then we end on a four. So who would like to tell me which interval this is? Four. Yeah, yell it out, Jim. Four. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. All right. Whoops. Somehow I... We're going to ignore that sharp. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and name these two notes now. What are these notes, everybody? That's e. E. That's right. E. What's the top note? Uh, it's, um, Trouble clef. It's G. One You're said a G. C. Yeah. Right. C. Good. All right. All right. Now I'm not going to see if you can count the number of lines and spaces between and have somebody go ahead and tell me what is the uh, interval number from E to C. What's the interval number between the two? Just count the lines in the space. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. That is right. It is a that six. Is right. it is All right, let's do one more and then we can open up to some questions and, and whatnot. So here we go. Naming the, the, these two notes. Again, we're going to ignore those things. Someone said an A. Uh, that, it would be true if we were um, in the base class. So make sure you're looking at the sheet that has this symbol on the left. Travel class. So Travel it was the base class. Yeah. Someone said F. Is it F, F and F. F. That's correct. That's what Joe said. Yeah. Joe. F and F. Yep. Perfect. All right. So what is the interval from these two notes? What's the interval between the two notes, everybody? Seven. One person said a seventh. Um, not quite a seventh. What? An eighth. That is correct. It is an eighth. All right. We can do this all day. <laughs> yeah, it would be fun. Yeah. All right. All right, let's give Tom a hand. Thank you so very much. Very good. And it's, that's a very great tool. So um, what I would like to do, and I'll go around. I literally had you on the like the, the bench here so everybody could see you because his iPad could be raised up so Tom could see you. Uh, and there you are, Tom, on the screen. Uh, so they could see, and there is a little bit of an echo. That's why I had to mute the, the mic for some of it. Uh, so questions for Tom. Uh, raise your hand if you have any questions. Uh, it could be anything as long as it's relatable uh, to what we talked about or about his background. Uh, any questions? Raise your hand. And we'll go around the room. Well, Joan? For how many years? How many years you have been in music? So I started taking piano lessons when I was six years old, um, and then I I quit after about six months, and then <laughs> I got back into it again when I was nine. Um, and I am currently forty years old, so I've been doing music for thirty-one years. Uh, but professionally, I've been doing music for about tw since 2001. So about 22 years. I'm sorry. Go ahead, John. Uh, what made you go back at age nine? Oh, yeah. So, so when I was six, the only reason why I took piano was because my brother, my two older brothers were taking piano. And then um, when I went back because my mom was playing Fear Elise, on the piano and I was like plucking it out myself and so she put me in lessons and the I got to my first lesson and I said I want to learn Fear Elise I had no idea how to do anything and she's like great let's start with this first and put up like Mary had a little lamb or something like <laughs> but in about a year I was playing Fear Elise so and again thank you yeah you're welcome thank you very much you're welcome. Thank you for the question. All right. Any other questions for Mr. Tom? Do you have a question, Joanne? No. Nope. Any questions? Wow, you're a quiet group. You must enjoy this. No <laughs> questions. Anybody have a question? It could be anything. Explain better. Hold on. Here's Joe. Here's Joe. Go ahead, Joe. Explain better what the signs go. The trap. G, F, and the F, what they mean. You, you're asking if I could explain what the, what those two clefs are? Yeah, what? The I'll two clefs. clefs what the they question. tell you. Yeah, what so the, the, two the clefs, trouble yeah. clef, the, yeah, the trouble clef, the one that looks like a big S, or we call also called a G clef, um, that basically tells you to play higher notes. So if you're looking at a piano, right in the middle of the keyboard, um, is our like our middle C note, right? And for women, most women are going to be singing in the treble clef. So all these high pitches um, that are really high. For men, we're mostly going to be singing in the bass clef. Um, unless you happen to sing tenor, then you, you kind of go back and forth. But most often, you're, it's going to be low notes. So the treble clef talks about high pitches, um, and then the bass clef shows you all your low pitches. And that's basically the two difference between those two. There is another one called the alto clef, 
and the tenor clef. Um, <laughs> unless you play the the trombone or the viola or cello, you're not gonna you're not gonna ever see those. Um, and, and good riddance because it actually I don't like them. <laughs> They're a bit confusing. They are very confusing, and in fact, I have a uh, a publisher score of a Bach piece, the B minor M S, and the St. John's Passion of a full conductor score, and the singers uh, actually have uh, the tenor and the alto clef um, on the tenor and alto line. Uh, but no one will read that anymore. If you talk to any modern singer, the best musicians, they very rarely will be, you know, reading tenor and alto clefs. I mean, they're just different than what we read. I hate them. I mean, I can't stand it. Uh, but with that being said, I'll tell you, some of the smartest musicians are the trombone player, the French horn players, trombones, and not trombones, but French horns and violas, because they can read every clef, which is like amazing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> any, uh, any other questions for Tom? I know it's incredible. I'll send you the score. I'll send you like a, the beginning of the score for you, Tom, on the St. Matthew Passion and show you the tenor clefs and that. But I have it in my house. It's a full conductor sure. score and has the tenor and the alto clefs. Any other questions for Tom? Do you have a question? No. I can have, I have a couple of questions here. So um, what made you, uh, let's talk about, let's, well, we got time. We're doing better than what we thought we would do and time-wise, that's good. Uh, talk to me about, uh, let's talk about the music business. So um, how did you get into this like teaching music business? And then the next question is what started you in opera? So how did you transition from opera uh, and then transition also doing opera, but also doing the music business side of it. And then what that, what, how did you get inspired by that? Sure. So I, uh, in my undergrad years, um, I, well, actually before my undergrad years, I was a band nerd. Um, I played bass clarinet. I also played, and then I was mostly a pianist throughout high school. Joined choir um, when I was a senior in high school. And I really liked it. And I decided I was going to be a band director, uh, but then senior year decided to switch to choir instead. So I went to Northern Arizona University to be a choir director um, and then discovered that I actually could sing well. And, and they did a lot of opera. There are no musicals. And so I joined the opera and then just fell in love with the storytelling um, and how the fascination that somebody could actually sing and create such uh, noise without any amplification uh, from like a microphone, it's just themselves. And then, and also the idea of singing in foreign languages, like it just, it, I really fell in love with the whole artistry that came with opera singing and my voice blended to just fit quite well with that. I, I'm a full believer that every voice has a style that it fits best, whether that be pop, rock, uh, classical, uh, or you know, or even like old Baroque music and Renaissance style music, it, it just fits that voice better. So then when I was in college, um, I had to take a vocal pedagogy class. And that vocal ped class um, basically was just a way to learn how to teach voice, right? And I, again, I fell in love with the idea of uh, helping somebody who didn't know anything about singing and, and thought they weren't a singer to then suddenly learn that they do enjoy singing and they can sing um, was quite fascinating. And so I, I, I kind of adopted that into my practice as I went along into grad school um, to be also go further into vocal performance and opera. And it wasn't until I graduated from grad school, though, that I actually started teaching full time, um, as well as singing across the country. But uh, I started teaching there in St. Louis and uh, it first started out with mostly piano students, and uh, I, I I screwed up a bunch because I had no idea what I was doing. But um, you know, you learn along the way, and and so at, that was back in 2011, 2010 when I started that. Um, and then in Denver uh, is when I finally like really learned about how to teach somebody from the beginning um, effectively, both singing and piano. And now being here in in Philadelphia. Um, I was able to start my own business. So the other places I taught uh, private lessons at a facility at, at a facility or a, a building. And when I moved here, I decided that um, I wanted to do all of it. 
Um, so it was a big learning curve because I had to learn not just about how to manage a studio, but also um, how to market that studio and find students. Um, and then also how to do billing and budgeting. And it was basically running a business from, uh, from the ground up. Great, excellent. So, um, so another question. So what, if, um, what would be your advice to someone that, uh, you know, might have trouble understanding, you know, we have, you know most of I think, I think our residents did really well, but what happens if a resident says, I'm, I'm confused about like, you know, the, the, the intervals, you know, if it's a being actual and a treble clap, if it's a being actual and a bass clap, you know, how, what is the kind of the tools that they can take away that, that you would give them advice or that maybe wasn't mentioned? Sure. Um, for, I mean, the first thing I would say is to, if you're confused about what the letter name and whether um, on the staff, look at everything that's on the page um, that you know. So we've learned what the treble clef was and we learned what the bass clef was. So first things first, before you even identify what the letter name is, um, you need to identify what clef it's in. So am I in the treble clef or am I in the bass clef? Once you know that, you can then identify which line or space it's in. And you look at the note head. Sometimes notes have lines on them. We call them, uh, uh, what am I? Anyway, so we got a little line, right? I'm, I'm blanking on the name of that. No. Anyway, so, so we have a, a line um, and that distinguishes the, the like how fast the rhythm of the note. But that doesn't tell us where the note lies. It's always the head. So you got to figure out which line and which space it's in. And then go back to your little cheat sheets and utilize those cheat sheets. Don't feel bad about using cheat sheets. Uh, eventually, over time, you will it will be in your head and memorized. Um, there's, there's no, I still look things up all the time myself. Um, so, um, and then from there, you just find out what the note is and what the other note is, and then, then take your time and really just count from one to the next. Excellent. And my final question before we wrap this up is, uh, about what, how do people want to, if they want to know, cause we talked about you have a music business. So people who are maybe a resident, maybe a family member of a resident, maybe someone listening on the video on YouTube, how can they get in touch with you? What do you have to offer in business? I know you teach as well. And what, like, talk to me a little bit about your, your business and your website. Uh, we can, maybe you can just email it to me and we can put it on the YouTube video. Um, just talk to me about your business. What do you have to offer? What kind of programs you have to offer? Lessons, those kinds of things. Sure thing. So um, in my uh, music lessons business, it's called Curtain Call Music Lessons. You can go to curtaincallmusiclessons.com to kind of read through all the information. Um, at this school, we offer lessons in uh, piano lessons, voice lessons, and also ukulele lessons. Um, and I am in the process. We also have violin lessons as well online. Um, and we also do have a, we are working at getting a guitar instructor as well. And we also do one-on-one -on -one, uh, music theory lessons. So let's say you you decide to join a little choir, but you're not looking for voice lessons themselves, but you want to have some tutoring on how to read music. That is something we also offer there as well. I'm also in the process of creating an online course uh, that is music theory for the choral singer. So specifically for singers, um, I often have found in my own teaching that a lot of singers get left in the dust. When I was in uh, undergrad, I had the privilege of, of, of learning theory when I was in high school. And I attached it to the piano and it made, it made a lot of sense. But I had a lot of friends in college who were failing their classes uh, in music theory because they were singers and they, they didn't play an instrument. And so they, they, they had all these ideas that were abstract and they just kind of um, didn't really get it. So I tutored a bunch of them to help them figure out to them what it really meant um, for music theory. So um, I'm going to go ahead and give those links out to everybody so that you can, if anybody's interested in joining my online music theory course, which I'm hoping to launch in May, um, it's a rather about a 90 day course. So in about three months, you'll know the basics. Um, that'll give you uh, enough to sing in a small choir, um, feel more confident with your 
for singing and reading sheet music. Good, and friends, I, you know, people, residents listening on the video, family members or fellow friends of uh, either Tom, myself, or friends home, uh, you certainly want to be in touch um, with Tom Sitzler if you want to learn how to sing. Uh, and all those um, links will be on the YouTube video and Tom will send it to me. So the one you're watching the video now, it will be there. So we really are grateful to Tom Sitzler uh, and the graciousness that he has showed. Uh, and Tom's a really good guy. I highly recommend it from one professional musician to another. Tom's a really good uh, musician and teacher, and I would highly recommend him to almost anybody. I mean, so really good. Uh, last thing I said, I was talking to a church choir member. I'm also a music director at a church, and I mentioned she. I was mentioning your lecture because she was asking me, man, what, what are some tools that could help me to be a better choir singer? And I said, well, I'm talking to this guy, Tom Sitzer, my friend from Bryn Mawr, and uh, maybe you want to watch the video and maybe buy his product. So really, it's for anybody that wants to learn music, whether playing instrumental music, singing a solo, or singing choir, or just want to know it for fun uh, and appreciate music. It's there for you. And you can look at the links below. But let's give uh, Tom Sitzler a hand. Well done. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you so much for watching. We will continue to have more lectures. I think we will have Tom back for sure. I know we will have Tom back and, and maybe do a different part of um, the music theory lecture in the future. But folks, thank you so much for watching. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you. Don't, don't go anywhere, folks. Uh, just because I'm just stopping the recording, but I don't know how to stop the recording. Uh, how do you, can you end? The, oh, you have to end the recording. Can you end the recording?